Life. Life was always meant to be a state of being, not a phase. When the one who calls himself life drew forth matter from nothing and shaped it into trees, planets, octopi, and humans, he created these organisms to exist in perpetuity. There was no expiration date on creation. Of course this makes sense. If God is the life giver, who is not just eternal, but eternity itself, anything to which he has directly connected himself is going to draw from that life forever. Life exists as long as things have a connection to the life source. Thus, the great tragedy of Eden. Adam and Eve, the original humans, severed their connection to the source of life, not only for themselves, but for all creation. It's easy for us as their descendants to blame Adam and Eve for the sin, suffering, and decay that frustrates and characterizes life on Earth. But what about the rest of creation? Plants, rocks, and animals, all things that have zero taxonomic relation to humans. Do we realize that these two, to borrow God's words, are subject to frustration? But even there in Eden, God was working through frustration. Paul says in Romans 8 verses 20 to 22, For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Know this. It's okay for you to sigh and be frustrated. But it's also okay for everything to have that feeling. When you let out that sigh because the burden of life is so heavy, the rest of creation is sighing along with you and sighing because of you. But even as your sigh escapes, God pulls out something else hope. He hears a prayer for liberation, for a time when this decay is no more and all that remains is life. God found this promise of hope in Adam and Eve's sighing right after their fall. They were leaving the garden naked and afraid, and God gave them a gift that seemed so small but at the time was so big. He gave them clothes. He didn't have to but he wanted to protect the people he loved. Even after their rebellion, he still called them his. And unfortunately, to love them the way they needed to be loved, blood had to be shed. So Genesis 3.21 says, The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. God cut short the lives of the animals whose skin would be worn by the sinners so that he could provide for his people. Did those animals deserve it? Not at all. It wasn't their failure that cut their lives short. So you sigh. And with you, all creation sighs. But in our sighing, God works hope.